Greetings, programs. This is Wretch. Welcome back to Kotar. Now, you may be asking yourself, Wretch, what is Seth doing on board the Ebon Hawk? Well, to tell you the truth, guys, I have such a bad taste in my mouth for letting Sunray go free in the murder trial, I decided that we needed to uh, let loose some aggression on one of our assassination contracts. So, the Ebon Hawk is actually on Dantooine right now. We just landed. And we are going to rock out one of our contracts here, which I believe is the last one that's needed for our audition with the Geo Harajan. So let's go ahead and go with some people who have no qualms doing assassinations. Let's go with HK and Candorous. Now we're going to see what happens when we leave the um, shuttle, because sometimes that interesting storyline stuff does happen. Or when we leave the Ebonhawk. Ebonhawk's not a shuttle. On a level up, everyone. All right, good stuff. Yes. Anything? No, doesn't seem like it. Well, that's good. Maybe there's just nothing for Candorus and HK. I don't think there is anything for HK. I I do seem to recall something happening with Candorus. But let's uh, go ahead and get out of here and into the Dantooine Wilderness before the Jedi start raising questions about my uh, traveling companions. Now, the contract stated that he had a speeder bike parked near one of the Noble Estates, or at the Matale Estate. And I don't think this was here before. Zulan speeder. Nice. So, let's go ahead and get ready for a scrap if need be. This is the speeder of Zulan Centaur, the Grand Slaver. Zulan himself is nowhere in sight. Could we plant a bomb? That would be nice. Slice the speeder and activate its alarm system. Set fragmentation mine on the speeder. You set the fragmentation mine, then move far enough away so that you won't get caught in the blast when Zulan shows up. Let's see what happens here. That is definitely a Gran. Worst comes to worst, it might just take out his droids. Ready? I'm sure he didn't feel a thing. Dark side points gained. I don't really see... I mean, he's a slaver and a murderer, so... I think we should not have that... Ha not have those dark side points. I'll take them, though. Credits, Mandalorian power shields... Excellent. Easy peasy. And that's the last thing we have to do in Dantooine for a while, hopefully, so let's, uh... Oh, HK. Let's head back to uh, the Ebon Hawk and get back to Manon and let... What was his name? Lorgul Hulas. Let Hulas know that the uh, job is jobs are complete. Actually, I think now would probably be a good time to go ahead and check up on the crew and see if there's any storylines that we may have been missing. We've been on Manon for quite some time, dealing with uh, adjudication and all that nonsense. So let's start with Jahani. Yes. What is it? Is something wrong? Something always seems to be wrong with her. I was remembering Taris. What about it? It was a horrible place to have to live. At least in the lower cities where the non-humans tended to get relegated. Living for years in a place with no sun, living off the trash dropped from the upper levels, and the meager pay doing back-breaking labor. How did you survive? My family and I struggled each and every day to make something of our lives. But we could only go so far. Taxes from the corrupt government, more fees from the gangs controlling the streets, and whatever was left paying for what food and medical supplies we could afford. No one would help you? And of course, 
There was the constant bigotry and hate from the more affluent and human citizens, lording their wealth over us living below. Every once in a while, a rich human would come down through the lower levels with his droid entourage just to see how the wildlife lived and laughed at the mockeries that were our successes. But I have come to meet many decent humans in my travels since those days. Indeed, some of the greatest people I have ever met are human. That's good. One of the Jedi that you met? The Jedi who encouraged me to join the Order. The one who was with the group going to fight the Mandalorians. She was human. I am sorry. I am getting away from my point. If there even was one. Sometimes I curse the day my parents fled to Taris. But then again, if they had not, I would not be where I am today. Fled from where? Another story for another time. For now, we must continue our own epic, to save the galaxy, if we can. Hmm. How may I be of assistance to you, Padawan? I was wondering if we could talk again. What is it you would like to speak to me about? Tell me more about your past. Well, I mentioned before that my parents had fled to Taris. Perhaps I can tell you about that. We, we've apparently missed a lot of uh, plot points. Go on. In the early days of the Mandalorian War, there had been fighting closer to the Outer Rim worlds. Were your people from that region? Cathar was there, yes. My people had a great reputation as warriors, and that appealed to the Mandalore version of honor. They sought to test themselves against us, I think. Test themselves by bombing our world. Slaughtering my people while they slept, or while they ran. How did it happen? They swooped down from space, across the world, firing at anything that moved. They used ships in space to destroy all orbital facilities and bombard the surface. We did resist. And in spite of their violent attack, we did stave them off for quite a while. But in the end, we were doomed. Why did the Republic not help you? We were not members of the Republic. Cathar was beyond the edge of the Republic, in the Outer Rim. And besides, they could not have known. Our interstellar communications were the first things the Mandalores hit. All other short-range communicators were jammed. We were on our own. We knew what was coming. We had fought the Mandalorians in the first war against Exar Kun and the Sith. We knew there would be no mercy for us. The most we could do was pack the few of our people who survived onto what few ships remained and send them off into space as fast as they could. Most did not make it. What about your family? My parents carried me as a baby with them and were lucky enough to escape. They fled as far as they were able and eventually settled on Taris. They could stand running no further, I think. But Taris was a horrible choice. Dominated by humans, intolerant of other species, made everyday life unnecessarily hard. How did your family cope? My father... My father turned to stimulants. He spent much of his time in local bars and dives. But we are warriors. It runs through our blood. And when he was on stims, he... he... he became foolish. He let his warrior nature get the best of him. So he would get intoxicated, and he would fight. And finally, one day, he would die. How did he die? Killed by a man who provoked him into a fight and killed him like an animal. I, I am sorry. I, I cannot talk about this any longer right now. That's completely understandable. How may I be of assistance to you? Let's Father keep I? talking. What is it? Ah. Of course. All right. Nothing from uh, Johanni right now. So that means we're definitely probably going to get story time for a lot of folk. Mission... Oh, we need to go back to Tatooine, too, don't we? We need to uh, talk to Mission's brother. Hey there. What can I do for you? Hmm. Let's talk to you about your brother. I appreciate everything you've done for Griff. You know that, right? I just hope things work out for him this time around. I guess we'll find out when he meets up with us at the Zerka Corp shop. If he's got those credits he promised you, then 
Maybe there's hope for him yet. Well, let's, uh... We may need to go ahead and do that as soon as we're done talking to folk. Yeah, what do you want? Nothing from Candrus. Your choice. And I don't think we improved our repair at all. What's our repair at? Need to double check. Computer use, repair. Repair is a total rank of 12. Do we have any weapons that can... Or any gear that can make that better? Awareness, demolition... Doesn't look like it. Bregic's belt, Verpine cardio regulator. Statement. HK-47 is ready to serve, Master. Let's go ahead and try. Affirmative. If you believe your skills are up to the task, Master, then I can certainly guide you through the process. Request. I only ask that you be oh so very careful, Master. I am too valuable and well-crafted to perish at the hands of ineptitude. Let's get started, then. Statement. As you wish, Master. You are already familiar with accessing my central control cluster, correct? Now you will need to... I don't think we're going to make it, though. No. No! What are you doing, Master? That is my motor core! Stop! Ah! Suffocation. <laughs> Perhaps it would be best if you desisted your efforts for the moment, me... I mean, Master. This seems to be going nowhere. Alright, we'll try it later. As you desire, Master. I cannot help but claim a small amount of relief. Signing off. Awesome. That's like the first time I've ever heard <laughs> HK squawk. Now, I know we pretty much have no more um, dialogue options with Zalbar. I don't think so, at least. And, oh yeah, Jolie's in the med bay. Let's check with Zalbar real quick, and then we'll go to our lovely folks up in the cockpit. Do, 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 do. Oh, there... Okay, there is something that we can talk to. You've seen more than I would have allowed, and taught me some things, too. I'm grateful for that. It'll be a while before I know what my role will be in making Kashyyyk truly free. I have a lot to learn. Why did you request to take Baka's sword? I'm not really sure I really know. Father expects much of me. I guess I do as well. I think when I've learned enough, I'll bring it back to Kashyyyk. What happens then, we'll see. I'm sorry we can't stay on Kashyyyk longer. You and I have important things to do, and I don't feel bad about leaving this time. I know I'll be welcomed back. I wish you well. Let's get going. I'll follow. Yay, that's good. Grumpy Wookie is less grumpy. Speaking of grumpy... Got something on your mind, do you? You mentioned something about your adventuring days. Oh, we can ask him about Sunray's verdict as well. Let's go ahead and do that first. Innocent. Hmm. I don't know what to make of it, to tell the truth. Do you think justice has been done? No, not really. But that has little to do with the law, doesn't it? A sad state of affairs, that... Too bad, really. Sunry was a good man once. Ugh, I don't want to talk about this anymore. My jaw aches. Yeah, I would have figured he wouldn't be particularly happy about that. Got something on you. You mentioned something about your adventuring days? Did I say that? Strange the tricks memory plays on you when you get older. So you weren't an adventurer? Didn't I say that my past was my affair? You don't see me poking and prodding you with questions, do you? Hmm. But you've already said so much, I'm curious. I'm not here to satisfy your curiosity. No staring at the old man, that's what the sign says, damn it. And besides, you don't really want to hear about me. We're talking ancient history, probably before you were born. History bores kids. Proven fact. That's false. I loved history growing up. Well, old people love to talk about history. Proven fact. Oh, fine, fine. Have it your way. Just don't cry about it later. 
Yes, yes, I was an adventurer. Happy now? I wasn't even done with my Jedi training back then. I had a full head of hair and an eagerness to see absolutely everything. Sound familiar? The Council was never happy with willful, brash Jolie Bindo, you see. Even less so when I began my smuggling career. You were a smuggler? Or actually, no, that's, that's not that surprising. How did that happen? At the time, the Yukata system was interdicted by its own king. He preferred to keep his people starving and poor, all the better to oppress them. The Senate was trying to negotiate a peace, but they were getting nowhere as usual. And I decided I wasn't going to wait. I found myself a ship and a partner, and we began smuggling food and supplies to the Yukata citizenry through the blockade. Was it very dangerous? Oh, it was. I was a half-decent pilot in those days. And with the Force guiding me, we made it through some tough spots nobody else would have. You were a pilot, too? Pilot, smuggler, several other things, too. Or did you suppose I was always a crotchety hermit? Where did you get the credits for all the supplies? Well, we didn't buy all the equipment, per se. Some were happy to donate goods. Some we just, uh, knew had more than they could use. So you stole it? Stole is such a harsh word. They would have donated those goods readily enough if they were compassionate. I considered it a tax on the greedy. We only got caught once. A lone Yukatish frigate shot us down and forced a crash landing. I thought the force had abandoned me, as I remember. What happened then? Well, as it happens... Getting shot down turned out to be very fortunate. That day was the day I... That was the day you what? Well, that... that was the day I met my wife. Oh. Uh, I'm sorry. It's alright. When you're digging through the trash, you shouldn't be surprised when you encounter something unpleasant. I... if it's all the same to you, I'd prefer to stop talking now, my... Mouth is starting to draw flies. <laughs> I like that analogy. I never heard that. Got something. Oh, uh, I get it. Nothing more from Jolie. And let's see what uh, Bastila and Karth have to say. What do you need? Do you want to talk? Talk about what? The only thing I want to do right now is find Dustal. If he's alive. There's just nothing else I want to think about. I'll understand if we can't look for him right now, but if we could, it would be a huge load off my mind. Fair enough. And what about you, ma'am? How can I help? Do you feel better now? Yes. That brought me a lot of peace. More than I thought it would have. Thank you for urging me toward it. After all my training, I would have thought it would have been easier. Apparently, I still have much to learn. Well, there's always much to learn. How can I help? You're curious about something. Am I so transparent? I suppose I shouldn't be surprised, considering our bond. Yes, there is something I would like to ask, if you'll permit it. Go ahead. In our time together, I've been watching you. You are a true servant of the light. You follow the tenets of the Jedi Order, despite the lore of the dark side. And with so little training. For me, it has always been a constant battle. Don't you find it difficult at all? You make it seem so easy. Or is that only an illusion? When I'm not moonlighting as an assassin. I just do what I think is right. And that's enough for you. If only it were as easy for me. If only the right path was always clear. I've always struggled for control over my passions. I've always been too quick to anger. Too quick to get involved. My instructors constantly berated me for it. I've often dreamed that I might be able to confront Darth Malak myself. I dream I can use all this power I have to kill him and stop all the death and destruction. I just think about all the evil that the Sith have caused and I, I get so furious. Yet we are told that these feelings are the path to the dark side. Hmm. I think destroying that kind of evil would be worth it. What comes next? After using all that power, would you decide to impose your own view on the universe? 
The dark side corrupts your very thoughts. The very thought that I could become as evil as Malak, I just can't fathom it. It just doesn't seem possible. I mean, how could I... No. Wait, I'm sorry. I shouldn't even be asking you this. The Jedi teachings are clear. Who am I to question them? And even worse, who am I to try and make you question them? What? These are dangerous thoughts. The indulgence of a vain mind. Please, forget I ever mentioned this. Let's just return to our mission. Hmm. How can I help? Then I said. Oh, well, that was odd. But it looks like we finished uh, talking to the crew. So I think we need to go ahead and travel to Tatooine. And talk to Griff. And see where we're going to go from here with his wacky hijinks. Back in the Zerka office. Where's Griff? Greetings again from the. Hmm. Farewell. Well then, that's strange. This is the only Zerka one I'm aware of. Griff. Commuted later in the Zerka supply shop on Tatooine to collect the debt. Yeah, okay. I guess he's just... You're that friend of Griff, right? He gave me a message for you. I don't like the sound of this. He told me to tell you he made a mistake brewing the Teresian Ale. It didn't work out right for some reason. Surprise, surprise. I'm not surprised. Anything else? He told me the tack gland was ruined, and he said he wasn't going to stick around and have to face his exchange contact. Did he say where he was going? He hopped on board the last shuttle. I don't know where he was heading, but I can't say I'm sorry he's gone. He was one of the worst employees I ever had. He was always on a break. He mixed up orders, and I think he might have been stealing from me. Hmm. I have to go after him. People like Griff, they know how to disappear when they get in too deep. You won't hear from him again anytime soon. Waste of time to even bother looking for him. Damn it, Griff. Won't you ever learn? How can my own flesh and blood be so stupid? There was one last thing. He said to tell his sister goodbye, and to tell her he's sorry. Well, crap. And that's the end of uh, the Griff storyline. I'm sorry, Mission. Hey there. What can I do for you? Let's talk about Griff. I want to thank you for helping me with Griff. You, you did everything you could for my brother. More than most people would have. I know it might look like it didn't make any difference in the end. Griff's in debt and on the run like usual. But at least I know we tried to help him. Hmm. I, I don't know. I do want to just call him an outright slime ball, but we need to be kind of comforting. So just don't don't give up on him. He could still change. I know people can change no matter how bad they were, but uh, I'm not holding my breath. None of us is perfect, but I've come to realize that Griff is a little less perfect than most. My brother is what he is, but I've learned to deal with that. I'll never forget that he looked after me when I was just a kid, but I don't feel like I owe him anything anymore. There you go. That's a very mature attitude, Mission. I've made my peace with Griff and what he means to me. If he ever shows up again, I'll deal with him. But I'm not going to dwell on my brother anymore. It's time to move forward. So, is there anything else you need? Nope, that's about it. Okay, have it your way. And gain some light side points. Well, I guess because we just didn't want him dead. I'll tell you the truth, though. That is tempting. So, we'll head back to the Ebonhawk and land back on Manon, and at least we'll go talk to um, our contact and let him know that the assassination missions are done. First off, let's uh, make sure that there's no scene here. I'm taking Candrus with me just in case. Nope, looks like we're free and clear. See you guys back on Manon. So, that didn't take long. Just landed on Manon, and it looks like Bastila seems to have more on her mind. How can I help? I'd like to talk about what you said before, about giving in to your emotions. Yes, I did end that quite abruptly, didn't I? Perhaps a master could have addressed my questions with the proper wisdom, but I never should have brought it up here. Not with you. 
Part of my purpose on this mission was to guide you in the way of the light, to help you avoid the temptations of the dark side. But I fear I've failed in that task. I don't think I'm the proper Jedi to guide you. I'm no master. You should have remained with the Council. No, I disagree. Perhaps you're not being truly objective then. There's no need to spare my feelings on this point. The fact of the matter is I have never possessed much skill at controlling myself. With the bond that joins us, it seems I have even less. You have maintained the path of the light side, but it has been in spite of my influence, not because of it. It's increasingly obvious I am unable to guide you properly. You're doing your best. That's kind of you to say, but I think the evidence speaks for itself. I think... I think I may have made a very big mistake. I simply hope that you are not the one who pays the price, ultimately, for the fact that I can't help you enough. Maybe we could help each other. That's a kinder response than I deserve. And I can see there is wisdom in your words. You... you continue to be there for me, don't you? Even after I keep pushing you away, you're still around when I need you most. You're like no man I've known before. And you're nothing like what I expected you to be after... after the Council sent us on this mission together. How did you expect me to be? Well, just different, I suppose. Things are not going as I thought they would. I, I need time to think about all this. We should continue on with our mission for now. Fair enough. See, I don't think um, Bastila's thoughts have been particularly seditious, at least in terms of the um, pure Jedi philosophy. I think it's okay to question that kind of stuff, because it's kind of like putting a, putting a dam up against a raging river. If uh, that dam breaks, if you're not observing the cracks, then when that dam finally does break, the water's going to come out ten times more forceful than it would have if it had been naturally flowing. So, and we just ran right through customs without having to pay. That's nice. <laughs> now, oh, wait a minute. There is something we have forgot, we did forget to do. We need to, uh, I don't remember where he is. We need to let him know, uh, that one guy know that we found his daughter. That's kind of important to the overall, uh, happiness. I think he was over this way. Because the court was... the court was to the east. Let's double check just to make sure. Or I could be wrong with that. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Never mind. There's the holding cell, the mercenary enclave. Though I believe he was at the mercenary enclave, so... Do you mind? I'm in... In case you have Hmm. Still need to find out about why the Republic is hiring all of those mercenaries. Was it Nilko? Have you news for me, human? Have you discovered why the Republic is hiring mercenaries? I did this in a previous episode, didn't I? <laughs> Whoops. There he is. Human, you return. Have you information for me? I do have information for you, Shalus. Excellent. You have done well. What have you learned? The Sith are training the Silcath youth in the ways of the dark side. Yes, this makes sense. It is a wonder I did not see this before. Manon's greatest strength is our neutrality. If Malik brainwashes our youth and indoctrates them into the ways of the Sith, he will have a strong following among the Silcath people. Strong enough to seize control of Manon and our culto. My daughter, Shasa, she too has become indoctrinated into the Sith camp? I convince your daughter to turn her back on the Sith ways. Human, if you st speak the truth, I am forever in your debt. And yet my joy is tempered by the knowledge that the Sith still walk freely about Manan. Hopefully the testimony of my daughter will be enough to proof of their actions to make the Ato City authorities take action. I hope so. You've done much for me, human. Here are the credits I promised you. I only wish I had more to give. Thank you, Shalus. Please excuse me now, human. I must go speak to the Manon authorities about this Sith plot and what they have done to my beloved daughter. Hey! Got some credits. And some XP. 
So, we are back on Manon. We still need to figure out what the Republic is doing with all these mercs, and we still have a star map to find, so plenty to do. We're going to go ahead and end it here. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you liked the episode, please leave a like down below. Subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment. That'd be a big help. And we'll see you next time. Later days, everyone.